Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, and I'm here again for part three with Bobby Carrillo Hello. from Rexel USA. And today we're going to talk about VFD design and configuration. Is kinda, that right? Kind of like best practices. Best practices. So mm -hmm. VFD, variable frequency drive, best practices. So Bobby, what can you show us today? All right, let's see. We have um, things to consider when mounting VFDs or installing VFDs, things that will help the lifespan of the VFD that you install, variable frequency drive. There's three basic rules of drive maintenance, CDC. You wanna keep it clean as best you can. Keep it enclosed in, in you know, dust proof, waterproof enclosures. Keep it dry and keep it cool. The airflow is essential for VFDs. Mm. Um, definitely need to keep it cool. You wanna eliminate hot spots, provide internal circulation, and never exceed the manufacturer's temperature ratings of the VFD. We'll get into that in the next slide, but heat is the main reason why VFDs fail. Hmm. It's the number one most common reason why they fail. So really important to keep the spacing uh, top, bottom, and side to side so they, that the air can pass through them and, and help to cool them off. Absolutely. The PowerFlex 525s, uh, 520 series, um, they have the ability to zero stack them. Um, in the past, you would have to keep distance or space between around all around the VFD all the way. But now with the 525 series, um, you can actually zero stack them, put them right next to each other, and that's adequate. Um, and you only need an inch above and below. Um, and they also have external fans that you can add to it. So uh, lots of ways to keep it cool, um, but you definitely want to follow the manufacturer specifications mm. when it comes to those mountings, because again, heat's the killer. <laughs> and there, here we go. Every 10 degrees Celsius above the drive temperature rating will reduce the lifespan of the drive by at least half. Mm. That's a big deal. It is, it's huge. You, know, you typically want to get eight to 10 years out of each of these drives. So if you're cutting that in half just by getting that hot, it could be very costly. So. Proper enclosures are the first line of defense. You must match the environment, but also allow for the heat rejection of the VFD. VFD the VFDs are typically 97% efficiency, so figure 3% of the power capacity is rejected as heat. Sealed enclosures must have cooling. Fins out packaging can be used on smaller drives where the heat sinks are on the back or mounted outside of the panel. Vented enclosures must be filtered against dust or moisture. And also another thing that to uh, consider um, with these PowerFlex these VFDs specifically is that they come now with a coating on the PC boards that help prevent against corrosive gases, dust, and moisture. And all Rockwell drives come with this coating on the cards now. So that really helps um, the longevity of these drives. Yeah. Keeps the components sealed. Exactly. Yeah. Gives it a lot more protection. Location, location, location. You want to keep the, the drives or the drive panels mm. out of direct sunlight or hot equipment because of the heat, of course. Um, you want to protect it from liquids and condensation. It excludes salt and chemical sprays. And you definitely want to prevent freezing. A lot of people worry about heat, but they don't always take into account the freezing side. And the capacitors can actually explode if you get them frozen. They get to a point where they're completely frozen. They are subject to exploding. Mm. As you can see, our, our little capacitor there is too chilly and she explodes. And so we don't we want to prevent that uh, freezing side also. Yeah, absolutely. So power considerations. So when you want to size the VFD for what your application is, you want to go off the motor nameplate amps, not just the horsepower. Because the full load amps is always a little bit higher than what the horsepower is. Service factors, things like that. So when you're sizing the VFD, definitely want to look at the motor nameplate and the full load amps. Um, and then you want to size your size for the application. You have normal duty and you have heavy duty VFDs. Uh, normal duty VFDs are for simple starting applications such as pumps and fans. Again, 70% of all AC motors are pumps and fans. Heavy duty, constant torque is when you might have high inertia, high shock loads. So you want to make sure that the size, that the VFDs heavy duty for these different types of applications. You don't need to oversize it unless you want to, unless you're worried about future expansion or changing out the motor. Normal duty, it's 110% overload for 60 seconds, 150% for three seconds. That means that it'll run for that long without faulting out. Hmm. Um, a normal duty drive will do that. It's not for excessive starting loads, uh, transient load spikes or high duty cycles. With centrifugal pumps and fans, the load equals flow. 
so it should never overload. Heavy duty, you can run 150% overload for 60 seconds, 200% minimum for three seconds. So they're a little bit more robust and you know protects you against faulting out at startup with a uh, high torque load. It allows for full breakdown torque. Again, the high starting torque or high breakaway torque. And it also gives high running torque on cyclical loads, uh, reciprocating compressors. So heavy duty uh, drives are for you know those applications. All right, high torque loads. Correct. Anyway, you can click on the uh, like button if you like this video or click on the subscribe button if you want to subscribe to our channel. And I uh, just want to thank Bobby for coming out and telling us about the basics of VFD or best practices of VFD operation. And we'll see you in the next video.